curtain between touch and strength, so in other words, this is my solution to a problem because I didn't like the others. The problem itself is relatively easy. Um, going to convert the string to an integer or vice versa, and you have to do it somehow. It's a, it's a common problem, and um, there are really three different solutions. Um, C-style functions, uh, the new uh, C++ 11 functions, and of course, boost as a solution, let's go Now, it wouldn't be right not to mention A to I, as in, uh, it's, a, it's a trivial solution to use, as in, uh, it's a camera. camera. It's in front of the camera. The camera. Oh, to use as in um, if you need a quick hack um, and don't care about it going wrong as in if it, if it fails you won't know it just happily return zero um, you're good as in if you want to pass a command line argument for report or whatever it works however it's been deprecated, deprecated in the shape of uh, SCR2L and, um, well that's a little less easy to use. Um, similar to um, A to I, it, start, it uh, skips spaces in the beginning, because if you don't want that, you'll have to check for it. Um, well, as I said, it's significant how to use. You have, you have multiple functions, and it's, it's not only <coughs> SCR2L, you have SCR2UL, SCR2LL, SCR2. There's a whole list of them. And um, they offer little extensibility. Yeah, I think. You can, you can uh, pretty much uh, use a base, as in converting hexadecimal or octal, but that's where the problem stops. Now, the other way around um, is much of the same story, as in uh, you have only a single function, but uh, we'll get to that. But um, they use different modifiers, and um, you have a modifier for the for decimal, for long, long, for, again, the whole list of it. A second problem is the buffer size. Um, you print it, you're printed to a buffer, and what size does that need to be? Now, this initially seems like an easy problem. So you know your maximum, your minimum, you uh, take the uh, lock down of that, and you're good. You get <coughs> the negative sign. But these functions, um, they take regard of the locale of your system. Does it, um, the locale and have us to insert um, comma separate thousand separators? You might overflow. Um, you're better off picking something large, but then you, if you're doing a lot of them, you might be wasting memory or something. So it, it, you have to make a choice. As said, and again, you have very little extensibility. Now, C plus plus eleven. They they get this out, and he said, "We'll we'll, we'll fix this." <coughs> this um, they've come up with uh, these functions as to uh, as to I. Again, a whole list of them. And for plugging points, the uh, S2F, S2D, S2LD. Now, if you look at the specification, it basically says uh, S2I does whatever S2L, uh, SCR2L does, which is an interesting solution as the standard doesn't specify what SCR2L does. <laughs> now, the GNU guys went like, Okay, supposed to do the same, we'll just use the functions we have. Um, they've written a wrapper which um, does all the error checking you had to do yourself before, so that's good. You're not going to screw up the uh, error checking again. And um, they throw a 
um, invalid argument if it fails, and in some cases it can throw a, I don't know, it can throw something out. Ah, um, an overflow, through an overflow. Um, on the other hand, you also have uh, to string, which basically grabs uh, a sent print there. Now, these are definitely easier to use than the counterparts. You won't have to uh, select the buffer size for SN print that. By the way, the new guys picked four times the size of the type. Just if you ever have to use a buffer size, that seems to work for them. Um, but other than that, it has similar downsides. There's still a whole bunch of functions, um, and you have little extensibility, etc. And it'll always throw unless you revert back to the C functions. Now, of course, boost has a, has a function <laughs> that fixes the problem, yeah. and it's easy to use, look at that. Now, it's implemented using string streams, um, pretty much this is the basis of it. And um, it's slow, it's not that slow. And this, this might not always be a problem, is if you can live with the speed, it's a perfectly valid solution. Um, all those string streams do have their modifiers, like STB, hacks, etc. Um, lexical cast doesn't offer an interface to use these, which is a shame in my opinion. And again, it will always throw. There is no way uh, for it to return a default value, for example. Now, of course, um, I know the company we work, I work at, um, we generally, generally use lexical cast and it works, it works well. However, um, in a specific case, we, we needed the speed which um, lexical cast doesn't offer. So, at the time I had just discovered Spirit and it seemed like a uh, pretty nice hammer to, have, to hit this problem with. Um, so. Um, I wrote a trivial wrapper for Spirit. Um, my employee was somewhat scared of Spirit, um, as a few others. So um, that mm, nicely hid it away, and you could happily convert between strings and doubles and integers. Now, from what we see before, we wanted to be generic, and we got an old whole list of functions, easy to use. Fast. Now, fast is fast can be seen in two options. As in, it can be fast to compile. It can be fast at runtime. Um, in this case, I care about it being fast at runtime. Um, you want it to take errors into account, possibly locale. You want it to be extensible and um, have the option of not throwing. That's quite a list. So, we have a solution. As you can see, there's an interface as default, which doesn't throw. And other than that, it looks pretty much like lexical cast. Now, unlike lexical cast, it can't convert between random types. So you can use lexical cast to have to convert between shorts and integers and all these types. Now, there's a pretty nice library whose numeric cast which solves most of these problems for you. It'll throw with your overflow, underflow, etc. Um, use that. So there's really no need to cast between integral types. Sure. So does this, this pass to that, or should you just uh, not use this and use numeric cast? Just not use it. As in, um, it, it will. Um, it will assert, I believe, as in, uh, I can do this, do something else. Um, <coughs> now, a quick synopsis. Um, it can, um, if you were, right. <coughs> the target is the thing you're trying to convert to. The source is what you're converting from, type-wise. So in this case, we're converting from an integer to a string. Now, there's also an interface that uses tags, and we'll get to these. 
the same happens uh, with the default interface, um, except that you get a default value which you will return in case it fails. Now this works especially nicely with boost optional. If you have the target of an optional integer and it fails, um, this will happily return a default constructed optional which is empty by default. I'm sorry, could you go back one? It, what, what does this do? The as default? The as default is basically the same as s, as in um, except, right, got to mention this, if s fails, um, it will throw a good uh, bad cost. Um, might have to rename that in the future. Um, as default doesn't, it will return the default value you passed in. Okay. Now, all S and S default do um, is call into a trade, um, which allows you to write your own backends. Now, a backend is really like a single function which returns a boolean. Um, have you been able to convert it or not? And you get the target right into the source, the source type, and the tag again. Um, the tags can be used to overload these backends. Um, whilst there is a default backend, which we'll get to, you can overload it uh, to use select a different backend uh, using this tag. Now, we've implemented the default backend again. Um, Spirit seemed like a nice hammer to hit this problem with at the time, and it still is. So, um, quick show of hands, who's been to Marshall's talk yesterday? Right. This will look familiar, hopefully. Um, we're trying to convert from from strings to um, two types and vice versa, so yet there are quite a few types of strings. Um, even some things which as in, it's a list of characters, a string. Um, and we split these up into two types, source strings and target strings. A source string is a string that you take as an argument, as a source, which you can convert to a different type. Now, by default, these are implemented. Um, it's, it should match your your daily strings, as in, um, if you have a QT string, you can upload these and it'll just work. Now, um, just like iterator range, um, a source string is nothing more than, than a begin and an end. The reason that um, boost range isn't used is because it considers, um, it considers all these things as arrays by default. <coughs> And at the time I was using that, um, it was it didn't always do the thing I'd like it to do. Um, now, the target strings are strings that um, basically offer a back insert iterator, just like you can write into. Uh, <coughs> by default, your basic string and factor are implemented. But again, you can overload it with whatever you want as long as you're able to uh, return the back insert iterator. Now, conversions in our heart, and as we've seen lexical cast use string streams to do conversions, I don't want to go implement conversions myself. So, the real trick to writing a conversion library is by not doing conversions and having someone else do it. It's going to be easier. <laughs> so, um, Depending on the types you're passing, um, either QR, uh, spirit key or spirit karma is selected um, to do the conversion by default. Again, you can um, write a different backend, overload this, and do something else completely. Um, you can even write a backend which basically does nothing more than a try lexical cast and catch, return false, and you get the um, uh, you get the SD4 for free, but uh, lexical cost doesn't offer it. So, the tags, they, um, 
they have a second use, which we'll get into now. So this only applies for the spirit backend. Um, if you write me back in yourself, you can basically do with it the tags whatever you want to. Instance of a struct, and you can do you can define it in a way that you want to. For the spirit backend, this is uh, the way they're defined. Uh, they contain a spirit parser and a spirit generator. Now, uh, if you only want to convert from uh, a string to a type, Parsers are not as in you don't have to implement both. So, what happens by default? You, you don't want to start implementing a whole bunch of attacks to do conversions. Um, it turns out Spirit has this rather nice um, auto utility. So Spirit works via attributes. And um, if you pass it auto, it'll select a parser depending on the uh, attribute you're interested in. As in the attributes in this case are the targets, uh, the thing we want to convert to. Now, the same thing happens for karma, but the other way around. As in, a suitable generator is selected uh, from all the, op all the existing operators. Um, this by default will happily let um, key auto and karma auto use this. There's a single exception. Um, floating points are generated with a position of 3 by default in spirit. Um, in uh, course it's been overloaded to use um, the maximum precision that's sanely possible to, in a fashion similar to what lexical cost does. Now, <laughs> um, this um, allows you, for example, to implement a hex tag which um, builds upon this very hex parser um, to convert um, an unsigned string to a uh, to convert a string representation of a hexadecimal to an integer and back. Um, hex by default allows um, a, an optional 0x in front. Um, there's a generic um, base parser which doesn't do that. You don't want that to happen. In a similar fashion, um, the gamma generator does not um, generate the prefix by default. If you want it, you'll have to add it yourself. So, Completely contrary to my planning, this happened quite a bit faster than my intention was. Um, it's uh, the source is currently located in the sandbox, Boost Core Sandbox. Um, if you're willing to give it a try, um, and you can contact me at the given email address. So, knowing that I generally skip things in presentations, which is <laughs> went fast. Is there other any questions? Right. So that means that it's not part of the Boost library, but it's no, in consideration it for um, inclusion? It's, um, I hope to get it revised soon, as in um, the documentation needs an update, as in that the <coughs> development since, and I need to update the documentation. But Hartman um, has kindly offered to be the review manager, so I hope to get it reviewed when I have time. As in, Marshall told me to uh, expect to get nothing done whatsoever during the review, except for the review. So, um, with a little luck, um, it'll happen during the summer when I don't have classes. Do you have any uh, estimates how much faster it is than Lux Um It it really depends. As in, if you're Converting to a string, it isn't all that much faster since the uh, string allocation is dominates everything else you're doing. Um, in the other way around, when converting a string to an integer, um, I've I've done the benchmarks, but they're, they're really tricky. From my 
estimation, it's about 17 times faster than electrical cost. Um, would it be possible, just throwing it out, to uh, do conversion into an existing buffer so that you avoid the, the string allocation or provide right. a free allocated uh, string object? Um, by default, there's, I haven't included it as in, I wasn't planning on going this quickly. So, um, there's a framework which allows you to specify how much. Um, but how much room that's reserved in the string you're converting into, which actually uh, led to a three times speed up. So um, for all the default types, they're uh, defined, and if you're converting to a Boolean, it'll happily reserve, um, res co reserve five in the case you want false, um, and etc. for all the other types. Thus, um, that helps, and then. Um, Converting into a static buffer, you'll have to um, you'll have to return. It's in these functions are returning by value, so you probably have to do a copy anyways. Okay. In the end, which might can can be loaded this way. Just but I I remember we discussed doing doing just moving the pointer out there. I, I don't know, don't remember what was the outcome of that. I don't either, so oh, okay. I'm quite sure. <laughs> So um, my target, if I'm converting from, let's say, an int to a string, my target, can that be a C array or something um, like that? No, they have to be copyable. Um, there are probably ways around this, as in to wrap the C array, but other than that, it, it isn't possible by default, so you'll have to wrap the array. Because you're going to copy it out. Exactly. Um, calling the traits directly um, will Give you a reference, as in you can reference the buffer, and um, I might have to look into offering that as a third interface. Um, that way, you could probably do it, but at the moment, it isn't possible. No. Would it, I don't know if this makes sense, but would it be possible maybe to uh, add a like kind of a helper class that's a that is like a string right. buffer wrapper? Right. That, would fit in exactly with this, return by value what it is, but really it just, you know, it, it knows how to do the right thing with pointers to that buffer and... Right, um, I have been thinking about wrapping um, boost array to basically do this. Yeah, right. I mean that's what yes. I use, you know, with the C functions anyway, so... Um, it is possible given the current interface, writing an output iterate is somewhat tricky, as in you'll have to do some checks not to overflow and, and throw in certain cases. But yes, that's certainly possible. It would it would make yes. it more useful for the people that really want to do it, you know, get the speed. Right. Bo boost format has some wrapper for doing that. You might look at how they do that. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can pass the C rate of boost format and you'll <coughs> pull that your string right in. So. Okay. You're passing that stuff by value, I mean by reference into the format. Right. Um, they have a wrapper for C array, so you can. But like he's he's getting the string out by value. Yes. Yeah, for format, but you're yeah. acting like on the. Yeah. Um, well, well, yeah. They'll be they'll be moved when that's possible. So um, it, to be turning by copy normally isn't a problem. These buffers are the exception here, fortunately. Great. You also mentioned boost spirit. What's the relationship between boost spirit and boost coerce? Um, so, by default, as in, um, do you know what spirit is? No, I do not. Uh, right, so asking. that's the problem. <laughs> um, spirit is a pass and generate framework which um, you can pass input to a, a type or struct, etc. It has both key, which does the parsing, mm -hmm. and comma, which does the reverse. It will generate a string um, from the types you're passing in um, via certain rules, as in you can um, create rules as in an integer followed by a comma followed by an integer, parse those and generate them. Um, so by default, uh, Coerce builds upon Spirit to do the conversions, as in um, I've written, I've looked at Spirit, it's um, before um, floating point passes and generators and they scare you, so I'd rather not do that myself and 
uh, Spirit's a solution to that problem by default. Okay, so there's no dependency. And I thought you were you're just you were just comparing the two. Uh, no, gotcha. it, it okay. really depends on Spirit to do the conversions. I'm sorry, say he's, again. He's using Spirit as the default parser. Right. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, um, if you don't want the Spirit dependency, can you take the the, the framework of coerce, right. write your own backend and not have it include Spirit anywhere? No, at the moment not. It'll be uh, pulled <coughs> the default tag at the moment, which pulls in parts of Spirit. So that isn't currently possible. Um, all the loops have been minimized, so you cannot really hold that much Spirit, but that does pull in a part. Um, I'm not, not quite sure if I can fix that. I'll have to look into that. Huh? Can you um, adjust the floating point precision? You know, yes. The um, there are a couple of these stacks at the moment. Um, basically, uh, different bases you can use. And there's one for uh, selecting precision. Um, I hope people will write these stacks and submit them to me as in um, that I can include a bunch more. Um, some I didn't mean to write a couple, but not the time. One nice one might, for example, be uh, one that a, a, delimit, a delimit tag so that you can pass in a factor of integers and you can and you get a comma separate string of these integers. Um, you, you can basically knock yourself out when it comes to these spirit parsers. And Michael, for example, has written a JSON parser and you could easily stick that in here as in um, have it pass JSON and return you the JSON type. Um, <coughs> whether you want to really use course to do that, probably not at that point. You're probably better off going Spirit to begin with yourself. So, but for these trivial tags, yes, you can write them. Um, and I'm hoping to write a bunch of useful ones and, and get them in. Right. Any more questions? Right. You, you mentioned the documentation needs to be updated, but are there examples of like writing a, your own class and, and yes. using some of these uh, uh, tags to do a few all, things? Yeah, uh, I can tell you a bunch of pretty much, every, just an example of doing all the basic things you can do with the course. Um, the main parts of the documentation are still up to date. It's um, a couple of the traits that have changed. Um, if you're not meaning to override I would do specify your own string types at the moment. You should the documentation should be fine. Um, it's it's probably a couple of hours of work to get the documentation. No, wake up. Example which uh, shows STL2L as a backend. There's a, a couple of examples of uh, using these tags to do hexadecimal conversions. Um, but, and, and the triple use cases uh, are shown in examples. Michael? Do, so, do you envision Chorus being basically the um, like a standardized interface in which we use to convert strings to types and types back to strings? And then the backends being able to be either exchanged or new tags for customization. Right. Um, the, the, the problem here really is that um, you can't. Well, essentially yes. The problem is different backends have different ways of doing a uh, conversion from, for example, a float to a string, as in. Um, no, Sure, but um, it's likely that the um, 
electrical draft conversion will differ somewhat mm. compared to the uh, spirit conversion. So um, the, the, the framework itself, as in the basic idea of the backends, etc., is trivial. What really matters is the default backend and um, selecting one there that would work is tricky. Mm -hmm. um, I've basically used Spirit because Flexible Cast already exists and um, I, I wanted, I basically needed the speed um, to have work. Um, but you could, for example, um, wrap all the, um, the, the C++ 11 functions to do the, the similar conversions and have it unified as one single interface in that way. Yes. Um, I think you answered this, but did you say there was a uh, the interface to find a function where you could pass your own buffer for the two-string conversion? Did you say that exists um, or no? <coughs> In a way, yes, as in S and S default going to the call the underlying trade which you could specify, and that does take it by reference. Um, there isn't a topmost uh, topmost API to do the same. Um, and I'll look into adding one to look into adding that as it does seem useful. Um, I'll have to think of a name that makes sense. But Um, what kind of string do you support? <laughs> yeah, we go. Right. Um, as in input strings, these at the moment. As in the base your standard char pointer to a string, um, a, a char array that's either not terminated or not. Um, the basic string in the iterator range and you can uh, specialize the string traits required by your own string types. Just if you want to example use a QT string, you can specialize these traits and um, it should work just fine. Um, as a target strings, it's basically the ones returning a uh, way you can return the back into the iterator. So these are by default, but you could add an, a list of characters or a queue of characters, though. In my opinion, that doesn't really make much sense as a string. In general, if I'm writing some domain class or something, you want to support string conversion for it. Do you have any suggestions or guidelines as to what kind of interface I should have on it? Like, uh, um, sounds like maybe just providing an O stream interfaces. Right. Really no, not, not uh, such a great thing. Maybe a okay. string interface. But exactly. Then, but then, should I add support for this course? What variety of string interfaces should I provide? Right. Um, there's currently two options, writing the writing a spirit grammar, which admittedly is a lot harder than um, writing a, a upstream operator as we used to at the moment. Um, or you could um, write your own backend, or use a backend like Lexical Cast that does support string streams, and then you can basically go back to um, to the O stream operators again. So it somewhat depends on the backend you're using and I don't think and I don't think there's a, uh, a single solution here which admittedly complicates these matters. As in with string streams you write the O stream operators and you're good. Here it does here you basically write a tag, so that's a little more complicated and um, with the default backend that'll work. If someone else uses a different backend, um, it, it won't work. So I, there's no single solution to doing that, unfortunately. <laughs> Couple of hands went up. Right. Uh, one comment from, from my perspective with regard to that library. Um, I find that library to be a, a very nice piece of work for two reasons. A, it has a strikingly simple interface 
which is very much resembling what we know from lexical cast or, or yeah. other things. And that's, that's the main problem and the the Yeah, and, and the other thing which is more important in the context of boost or generic programming is that it's not only providing a very simple interface, but is absolutely extensible without having to, to break your neck on while doing so. And that, that makes, makes it so appealing for, to me. That the fact that you use Spirit is just, you know, is, a, is an afterthought, an implementation detail almost, which allows you to extend it um, way beyond what it has been designed to. I mean, if you come up with a tag, and, and as you said, you can parse a list, uh, a vector of ints or, or, or whatever, yes, this was with the same interface. If you, want, you can actually um, hook a numerical cast into course as a backend for the integer conversions that we've, we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, that does, however, complicate <coughs> matters, um, as in there's, since it's so extensible, uh, there, as I said, there isn't a single solution for providing a, an interface from a string to a type and back for, for a new type. But if you look just at the standard, just say we want to standardize that interface. I mean, standard's all about interfaces, so right. let, let's think about uh, if you wanted to standardize that then uh, in the context of the standard, you have only a limited set of types you have to deal with anyway. And these could be very well defined in the context of that conversion. So I, I, I'm very appealed this, by the simplicity of, 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 of what you came up with. So I'm very glad you it, did it, that. It is one of the strong points, as in it, it's simple. Yeah. And, um, for most of the basic types, if you want speed, you can basically drop in course instead of lexical cast and it will just work. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. If you add the wrapper for a, a pre-allocated buffer, and I mean, I would assume that if you run the benchmark with that, you, you know, you're going to be right alongside the C. Yes. It's and, and, and tremendously much easier to use and extensible. I mean, that, that yes. would be fantastic. I mean, the underlying spirit puzzles are faster than A to I yes. and I to A. Uh, that's proven, I mean. That, okay. which, which are faster? The, the, the parser and the generator Oh, and, and spirit, and spirit are just faster than A to I and, and L to A. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you provide that buffer and, and avoid that allocation of that, you get essentially the raw speed you can get. Yeah, that would be great. There's, there's, yes, there's a reason for that though, as in A to I, etc. they take the current locale into account, whereas Spirit doesn't yet. Um, with the new boost locale library, it might be possible. We still have to look into that. Um, but that I believe currently is one of the reasons that it is faster. Um, yes, as in if, if Locale don't match for you, it's a perfectly good solution and it will be faster. My opinion. So, a um, question that came from the front earlier about if I have my own data type and I want to go ahead now fix, to use that, of course, and, and I'm just going to use the back end as it is. I don't want, you know, I don't want to worry about any of that stuff. Um, in essence, do I write the grammars for both directions, um, spirit grammars for both directions, and yes. attach that with the tag? And yes. that's what I That's basically what tags are, the two grammars, yes. So all the power that's to, that I have already, right, with using fusion and fusion adaption and stuff like that, yeah. I just use all, all that still, as normal, and works. then the rest of my users can just use my data type yes. um, very simplicity. In particular, I think you hook into the spirit automatic part of generation for the default tag. Yes. So if, if it's a fusion mapped struct, for example, I think it yes. would just work. Yes. Just works, huh? Um, Fairviews, um, pairs, etc. they'll just work. So you're saying if you, if you define your own user-defined type that's just like a a pod of a bunch of basic types, like it knows how to destruct that? And well, you'd, you'd have to do a fusion map. A fusion oh, map. Okay. Uh, okay. Basically, it uh, maps your struct into a fusion factor. Right. But, and then it'll work, yes. Right. Huh. Okay, so um, I'm, not, I'm not sure everybody in here will understand what you just said. Yeah. And um, the only reason I'm saying this is because as far as extensibility goes, this is an extremely powerful tool. Um, so maybe if you can just expand on that a little bit, what it would require to take a pod um, and make it so that you could convert it back and forth. Um, well, this 
where I basically should have had an example of uh, how to adapt a, a QC structure. I didn't realize that. Um, Add, uh, add one to your slide, and then when you post yes, I'll, I'll the presentation, that would be helpful. Yes, Thank you. Right. Yeah. Is it absolutely necessary to have both grammars for user-defined types, so the input and the output? Could no. you infer the if one leave, from the other? If you leave, uh, if you leave one, um, conversions one way of work, and if you leave the other, the conversion the other way of work, but not the other. I said, um, you, you can implement either. Um, I've been meaning to, and you can just, in the other case, um, add a static assert um, for the other grammar saying, no, this isn't implemented. Either implement it or But, but couldn't you infer from the, from the one direction the other direction? If it's... No, that's, um, that's something the Joel, I believe, has been looking into, um, as in merging the two grammars. Um, it, it turned out to be infeasible, unfortunately. Um, it, it works for most of the trivial parsers. Um, as soon as it gets a little more complicated, it, it basically can't be done, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure if he's looked into this again, but at the time he did, it was infeasible. And all the trivial parsers are implemented anyway, so yeah. you don't have to do anything for those. Just it'll by default get more tricky and you won't be able to import them. But I'm sorry to keep asking this, but maybe you probably just don't fully understand. But if let's just say I have pod and it has um, two ints and a standard string in it, which is maybe not so pod like anymore, but whatever. But let's say that's what I have, right? And I have a fusion adaption for that. Right. Is that all I do then? Yeah. I don't have to write any grammars, right? That's, that's all you do. And uh, then it works for karma, or it works for both sites. Yes. Okay. So, Thank you. so I don't have to worry about that. Do you okay, specify yeah. the limiters? You will get the glued together when you when you do the two yeah. string conversion, right? Um, you're right. Um, there isn't a delimiter tag at the moment. It, it is on my to do list somewhere. Hmm. After doing the documentation, which is probably the reason it hasn't been done yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, or it, you need it to limit them basically, um, or it will get stuck together. Um, I think we need to write that. <laughs> okay. So, we ended up with 45 minutes anyway, so <laughs> I guess we're there.